South Africans are waiting to see what their next government will look like following last week's elections. But one thing is certain, the ruling African National Congress has lost its majority. For the first time since the end of apartheid, the party will need to make a deal with the opposition to form a coalition government. Now, the result was a major blow for the ANC. Since 1994, it secured more than 60% of the vote in every election except one. And that's until this year, when it could only gain 40%. And it appears the public dissatisfaction was not just with the ANC, but with the political process as a whole. Voter turnout has been on a gradual decline in recent years, but this year saw the lowest ever in South Africa's 30-year democratic history. But President Cyril Ramaphosa insists there's much to celebrate. Our people have given effect to the clarion call that, was, that has resonated across generations, that the people shall govern. Our people have spoken. Whether we like it or not, they have spoken. So what are the options for the ANC? The obvious choice is to team up with the largest opposition party, the Democratic Alliance. Between them, they would have enough seats in parliament to govern despite their differences. Now, the other options would be the Economic Freedom Fighters and the Unconto We Sizwe Party, or MK Party. It's led by former President Jacob Zuma. Now, Zuma's party has demanded Ramaphosa step down as a condition for a coalition, a sign of the personal animosity between the two. And the EFF have pledged to nationalize South Africa's important gold and platinum mines, as well as the central bank, which some experts say could be damaging for South Africa's image with foreign investors. So clearly not an easy task ahead for the ANC and President Ramaphosa. But as the political parties negotiate, let's get the view from South African, South Africans actually. Uh, we have Kimberly Mukushulwa in Johannesburg and we have Lesiba Sydney Mokopa uh, in Polokwane. Good to have the two of you on the program. Welcome to DW News Africa. Uh, let's start with you, Lesiba. You voted EFF, the Economic Freedom Fighters. Why, why did you? Um, um, thank you first for having me and um, greetings to your viewers. Um, look, yeah, I had a couple of things that I based my choice on. So the first was their manifesto. So their um, election manifesto, according to me, was well researched. You know, it went through, um, you, you know, stringent processes of making sure that it reflects the wishes and views of the people on the ground. There was a lot of consultations with different sectors of the society, being business, being entertainment, all sectors of the society, in making right. sure that the manifesto is as well informed as possible. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come to more of the issues in a bit, but uh, I just wanted a, a brief summary. Okay. Kimberly, you voted for three different parties uh, at different levels. Uh, how come? <laughs> um, well, just to say, so the regional one that I voted for was uh, Rise in Zanzi. And it's quite a new party. It's also got a lot of younger people in it. And I felt like it would be great to kind of give them a chance to, you know, get an idea of what it is like to run a country, but obviously at a lower level, um, which would also give them a lot of experience. Um, and then my national party, I voted for um, UDM. I feel mm. like I really liked their manifesto. Uh, they, I, I voted for them the last time as well. And as much as they're not as popular to everyone, I'd rather go with one that speaks to my heart. Mm. And then um, provincially, I went for Action SA. Uh, mainly because uh, Herman Mashaba, for example, when he was given certain duties to fulfill, he really did fulfill them and his time was just cut short. But I really believe that they could make a difference as well. Right. So, yeah, I thought a bit of um, variety is good for that. Okay. Coming back to you, Lesiba, you, when you were uh, choosing who to vote for, vote for and, and, and going to the ballot box, what were the main issues that influenced your vote? What, what was top of your mind? 
Yeah, well, basically it falls under the category of service delivery. You know, we're looking at infrastructure in terms of um, accessibility, in terms of roads. We're looking at healthcare. We're looking at um, land itself. You know, people need land for a variety of purposes, which currently is a very expensive thing to uh, to acquire. You know, we're looking at water. We're looking at access to school and proper education. So all those type of things were key um, to my decision making because I felt uh, I should vote for an organization that I feel at this point in time is capable of uh, addressing those issues uh, in the most effective way. Right. And, and looking at South Africa as a whole, the ANC, the African National Congress, has been the dominant party for most of both your lives. Uh, now they've suffered major losses. Kimberly, how do you feel about the prospect of a multi-party government? To be honest, I would rather prefer that. Um, I feel like I, I, I feel like I don't have an issue with it. I wouldn't want necessarily, and I don't want to bash anybody, but I wouldn't necessarily want ANC to run on its own again. Um, but I also wouldn't really want DA to run on its own. So I think, for example, them having a coalition, I think would be good, and it would challenge both parties to rather instead of constantly. Uh, calling out each other's faults than to rather work together towards making an actual change in the country. I think they both have their strengths and weaknesses and they could work together for the better of the country. Interesting point. Uh, Lesiba, what do you think this all, I mean, we've not got to a to, to final answer yet, but in terms of a government, but what do you think this development says about the state of democracy in South Africa? Well, we're looking at democracy at play and, you know, to its full potential, you know, where people are not subjected to just one organization, which, um, you know, so people have got now the liberty to choose who they think and believe that represent their views and wishes well. And then also this also bring together in, you know, a lot of um, expertise and knowledge. Um, other than only looking for answers from one group of people, we now have got people of different views, expertise, and so on that will come together and make sure that mm -hmm. there is a pool of knowledge and expertise that might possibly take our country forward and better. And what, if you were to address this, whichever government comes in, uh, Lesiba, and you were to give them one point, top of your list, that they should address immediately, what, what would you want them to do for you? Um, well, it will be the the issue of land. Um, let let us make land accessible for equal um, redistribution and use. Because with land, then comes a lot of things. You know, a lot of opportunities arises. People can open their businesses to sustain themselves. You know, people can use it for agriculture. You know, people can right. use it for proper settlement. Where now there will be access. To all sort of those things, so I think the the main issue will be um, land, you know, expropriation of land. Okay, uh, Kimberly, we'll finish off with you. What what would you be top of your list? Mine would definitely be youth development and youth unemployment, uh, because the youth are going to run the country eventually, and we really need some. You know, we need proper citizens of the country who are also in a good socio-economic standing in order for them to be productive people within the country. So for me, it's the youth. They are number one, top of my list. And that's a great point to stop. Well, thank you very much, Kimberly Mukushulwa in Johannesburg and Lesiba Makopa in Polokwane. It's great to have you. It's been good to have you on the program.